Hi YouTube, I'm going to do a birth plan um, video and just kind of go over um, just what I'm hoping for in my birth. Um, I know it's not going to be exactly how I want it. Nothing goes totally as planned, but um, this is what I would like if everything were to go um, exactly how I want. This would be my ideal. Um, during the first part of labor, I plan to be at home. Um, I want to be just relaxing. I want to take a bath. I want to be in the shower. I just want to be able to move around. Um, I read an article on how to check your dilation um, externally, not internally. And what you do is um, your xiphoid process, which is the like the tip of your bone right underneath your rib cage can kind of like fill the pointy bone. You measure like how many fingers you are right underneath that um, and then your your uterus is here and then the xiphoid process is here and then how many fingers you can fit is how far along you are. So like if you can only fit three maybe you're I think six centimeters but if you can only fit one then you're like eight and then if you can't fit any, then you're fully dilated. So I'm gonna kinda go with that so I have an idea on how I'm progressing so I don't wait too long to go to the hospital. Um, but I do want to wait as long as possible. Last time that was my plan and it just didn't happen that way. I went pretty much immediately because my contractions were going um, coming every minute and they were lasting a minute and um, I didn't know how far along I was. I didn't know I had the ability to check. So I, w I want that option. Um, now that I know and I'm not scared I'm going to have the baby you know, like on the side of the road or something, um, that's what I'm hoping for. So I really would love to have a water birth, but because that's not possible this time, I do want to spend most time in the bathtub just relaxing up until the moment that I feel I really need to just get to the hospital. Um, I am going to film pretty much as much as I possibly can. Um, I'm going to try and get my husband to film, my sister, or not my sister, um, my friend, my mom if she's here, just whoever's here. I just, I want as much footage as possible and I do plan on uploading it. Um, so hopefully that goes as planned because I didn't get a lot of footage with my first labor either and I had like five video cameras so no one just decided to pick it up and use it. Um, as far as who I want in the delivery room with me, in labor room, um, I want as many people if, who wants to be there. Um, my husband for sure, my friends, um, I have two friends out here who um, I'm pretty sure will be here or be there while I'm in labor. I want them in the room during the delivery. Um, if my mom is here, she bought a ticket um, to come visit. If I happen to go into labor while she's here, that would be amazing if she could be in the room with me. Um, but I don't, I'm not real shy. Like, you know, if there's got to be students who wants to learn, you know, they're, they're fine being in there. I don't, I don't care. I'm not embarrassed about it. They've seen hundreds of births. It's nothing new to them. It's, yeah, so I don't care who's in the room with me. I would like to bring music, but... I just don't know how realistic that is of me actually just sitting there listening to music, but I would like to have it if I want it. So um, I would like the lights dimmed um, as much as possible during the labor. I just um, I just want it real calm and relaxing um, as far as the atmosphere is, and then um, I want to be able to take pictures and obviously video during everything. And I don't think that's a problem. I don't remember them saying that I wasn't able to last time. I'm doing it at the same hospital, so hopefully they haven't changed any kind of rules. Um, I would like the option of returning home if they think I'm not very far along. Um, and if I've just measured it wrong or whatever, if they only tell me like I'm four or five centimeters, I want to go home. I don't want to stay. Because... It can take, you know, an hour between each dilation, and I don't, I don't want to be in the hospital for 12 hours or nine hours as I was with my first son. I want to be able to eat if I can. Um, I don't really think I'm gonna want to eat, but 
if I want to, I want to be able to. Um, I don't want to be told that I can't just because I might throw up. I mean, like, who cares? If I throw up, I throw up. That's just, you know, annoying to them. But it's not like it's going to harm you. It's just if you get nauseous. But I don't, I don't think it's good to um, go that long and not eat anything and have no energy when it comes to time to push. Your body needs as much energy as possible. And I'm sorry, ice chips is not going to give you energy. So if I'm feeling, you know, really, really down and I need some energy boost, I want to be able to eat. Um, and I don't know their policy on that. I'm not sure if, I, I have no idea if they're strict on that or not. I might just have to make sure I eat something before I'm at the hospital. I don't want an IV, but I'm pretty sure I have to have one. Um, it just was so painful the last time. They had it in my hand, and every time I bent my hand in the, like a weird way, the thing would start beeping like crazy because the, I don't know, it, it was insane. The nurse had to come in like every 15 minutes to adjust it, and it was, it was dumb. So I would love not to have an IV, but I'm pretty sure I have to have one. I do want to walk around um, and like birth on a birthing ball. Um, I have to buy one still. I don't have one. I don't know if they provide them. I don't think they would. So I do need to buy one. But I would love to be able to, you know, rock back and forth on a birthing ball. I've heard that that's really helpful in opening up um, just your pelvic area um, so that the baby can move down. Just kind of like that rocking back and forth. So I would like to get that. Hopefully, I do. <laughs> Um, I want my husband to be able to be with me all the time. Um, I don't want him them to have to like kick him out for whatever reason. I, I do want him with me the whole time. Um, <clears throat> I don't know, like birthing positions. I'm, I'm not really sure how squatting works, like when the baby comes out, but to me it makes more sense because gravity is kind of like helping you out. So it would be really cool if I can, you know, learn how to do that. Um, you gotta slow down on that, honey. Slow down. So I would like to do it squatting. I would like to give birth squatting, but I probably won't <laughs> just because I'm, I don't know. I'm really timid and I, I would if they're, you know, just like, it's time to push, you gotta push, and I'm laying down, I'm I'm probably not gonna fight too hard to try and, like, switch positions, but, um, it would be something I would like to try. Um, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> I do not want any kind of pain medication. I don't want anything. If they offer it to me, I'm going to bite someone's head off, because I will probably try and accept it, because I know that I'm I'm weak when I'm in pain, but ahead of time, knowing going into it, I don't want it. Um, so I hope I have some nurses that are really good and help me stick to it, even if I start begging, because I did when I was at, I hit eight centimeter, centimeters last time with my son, they checked me and it hurt so bad, I was just begging for medication. And the nurse said, that's not what you want. You don't want it. I'm not giving it to you. And she was amazing. And that's what I want again. I want someone who's going to not allow me to try and give in to that. Because after I was all said and done, I mean, it was the best feeling knowing that I just did that. I accomplished that. So that is, I'm, I'm hoping I just have a really great nurse again that helps me stick to it. Because I don't want anything. I don't even want Tylenol. I want nothing. Um, I just want to feel everything. I want a mirror. I want to be able to see him come out. Um... That was amazing last time. And I think it honestly, it really, I think, helps your motivation because you can see the progress. You can see his head start to come out. And if you don't push hard enough, it come, it goes right back in. And that just makes you want to push harder the next time and the next time until you see the whole head pop out. And it's just the most amazing thing to see in the entire world. It's just, to this day, the, my favorite feature on the, my son is just the top of his head. I just, I rub the top of his head because that was the first thing I saw of him. And it's just, 
it reminds me, it brings back those memories of me having him. And so I want that again. I want to have that connection and that emotional memory. So um, they had a mirror. They had a huge mirror that they just pulled right out, and I was able to watch everything. So I know that that won't be a problem. Um, I would like to try and focus on breathing and stuff like that, but I probably won't because I was all over the place. With <laughs> I just, I probably won't be able to do the whole breathing thing, but I'm going to try. I've never taken like a Lamaze class or anything like that, but um, it'd be really cool if it like could help, but we'll see. Um, I kind of want to push when I want to push. I don't want them to tell me to push. I don't really like the whole holding your breath thing because I think you need oxygen. I think holding your breath is not the smartest thing when you're trying to push your baby out because your baby needs oxygen still. And even though he gets it from the placenta, you still need to be breathing. So I kind of want to be able to breathe through my pushes, not hold my breath like they kind of instruct you to do. Um, and I think I could get away with that just doing it on my own. I don't think I really need to ask permission if I can breathe through a push. Um, I don't want them to cut the cord right away. I want that put off um, until it stops pulsating. And I just kind of want them to put him on my chest and just leave him attached and then cut the cord. I do not know their procedures on that. I need to check with them. But that is something that I'm I'm pretty serious about. And I, I would be really offended if they said that they wouldn't, weren't able to accommodate that. Um, because to me, it's, you know, this is, it's my child that's, you know, it's, it's not their right, I think, to just say we have to cut the cord right away. So I would be quite offended if they said that they weren't able to accommodate that. Um, I don't want an episiotomy, but if it has to happen, it has to happen. I mean, to me, a natural tear is way better, but I mean, that one, I mean, I'm, I'm kind of, you know, relaxed on. I don't want it, but... Um, I obviously want to hold my baby right away. I want to breastfeed right away. I don't want any kind of formula used. Um, they can give him a pacifier. That's fine. I at first with my first son, I didn't want a pacifier with him, but he he wanted to suck all the time. He just wanted to sit there and use me as a pacifier. And if you put your finger in his mouth, he just wanted to suck so badly that he would scream and cry because he he just that's what he needed. So for him. It, it was necessary. He, he needed it. So I don't, um, I'm not going to be a stickler on it if my son <laughs> needs that sensation to suck. And I can't unfortunately provide that with myself, with my breast, because um, they're going to get raw as it is just nursing. So I can't afford to, you know, let him do just suckle just for the pleasure of suckling. Um, as kind of cruel as that sounds. But he needs milk, so I want to. I need to keep them healthy. Um, I won't be able to do any kind of cord blood banking if I don't cut the cord right away. So I'm not really worried about that. Um, postpartum, I just kind of, however long I have to stay, I have to stay. I don't want to be there for very long. I kind of just want to go home um, right after. But I know they have, you know, different mandatory things that they do. I don't know. Like, with my son, he was over 10 pounds, so I had to stay an extra day. Um, I would like my son to come into the room, like, soon after the birth so he can, you know, meet his little brother. But if um, that's not possible right away, I understand that because they don't like children being in, like, the labor rooms and stuff. So if I have to wait a while, that's okay. Um... You know, there, he's going to have plenty of time for bonding, so I'm not worried about it. But I do want my son to be circumcised, so that is one thing that I am going to have them do um, right away. And if possible, I would like all of their little tests and all their stuff done with me rather than taking him to another place. Um, I would I would like my son to be able to stay with me all the time. I don't I don't want them taking him to the nursery for hours on end. I don't think it's necessary. I mean I do need some rest, but um, you know I, I I just 
I don't think it's necessary that they take him away for a long time. So, um, I'll kind of play that one by ear how I feel, but, um, I do want my husband to be able to, um, be with the, him during his first bath and video that. I have a video of my first son's bath and that was just really cool to look back on. So anyway, I know this is kind of long, but pretty much the basic points are labor at home, no medication, don't cut the cord right away. That's it. <laughs> I guess I could have just said those three things and been done with it, but there was a lot of questions on that little worksheet thing that I was kind of going through. So anyway, um, if you have any questions, feel free to ask. Um, I think I kind of covered everything though. So my next birth is going to be really cool though, because like I said, it's going to be a water birth and it's going to be at home and, um, yeah, it's going to be a totally different experience. So <clears throat> I'll be kind of excited about that one. Um, when the time comes, <laughs> probably like two years. Anyway, thanks for watching. And I hope I didn't bore you to tears. Bye, YouTube.